Hello, Lena here. It's been a long time since I made a video and I'm coming on making this video because I am just having a lot of thoughts and in everything we must turn to the Lord first and I was praying about it. I need to pray more about it. I need to have more quiet time about it. But something is on my heart. It's been my heart for years, but Today I've been asking myself the question, where would I be in life if it wasn't for the um, trauma? And the word says that we are a new creation in Christ. We hold all things that become new. The past, you know, he has redeemed us. He has redeemed me from the past. So I know that following Christ is absolutely number one and has redeemed, overwritten all you know, all of the perceived setbacks, all of the perceived, if this didn't happen, then this would be, or if that didn't happen, then this would be, all of that falls at the cross for the cross. And he works everything out for our good. But then there's this one story in my childhood that I wrestle with. And, well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. It goes like this. When I was little, um, younger, maybe like fourth grade, fifth grade, um, I was in ballet and anyone who knows me knows I love beauty. I love the expression of beauty and to me, ballet is one of the most, or the most, one of the most beautiful expressions of elegance and beauty and I absolutely love it. And I remember we were about to just, we were in class and I think like the next class or so we were going to um, start learning point you know as a little girl you see those beautiful pink um shiny point shoes and you're just so excited and i know i have i know as a child i was severely dissociated like sometimes it would just feel like everything's going by in a blur but um so apparently at that time, I mean, I don't remember, but I was falling asleep and falling asleep in class and I didn't even know I was falling, falling asleep in class. And so what happened was my teacher became concerned and had my parents come in and, or at least my mom or both my parents, I can't recall. And they asked, they sat me down and asked me, like, why are you falling asleep in classes? What's going on? And I, I think my teacher said, or my mom, someone said, I think it was my teacher, honestly. I don't think it was my mommy. I think she was like, is it your after school activities? Is it your ballet dancing? It's making you tired. Are you tired? No one had any bad intentions. I just, I literally, I literally, they're talking to a child trying to figure out why they're falling asleep when the child's not realizing that they're falling asleep in class. Like, I'm just thinking, with dissociation, with a severe dissociation I had as a child, it's like I could go to school, be blacked out, and somehow the end of the day would be over. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I would just get through the day. But it was like, it's like you're not really there. You're not, I don't know. Only God got me through that time. Um... So they're asking me these questions. I'm scared because the adults are sitting me down. They're saying, why are you falling asleep in class? And they were like, is it because of your dancing? I didn't understand what was happening. So I just said, yes, it's because of dancing. And from there, I got taken out of dancing because you know, my grades and education, which is rightfully so, is very important. And if I'm falling asleep in class, I'm going to fall behind in my studies and, you know, the consequences of that, so on and so forth. And that was the end of dancing for me in um, elementary school and middle school. I think in my senior year of high school, um, not senior year, sorry, uh, freshman end of freshman year of high school um I got into theater and by the grace of God I was able to do some musicals and some stage plays 
and that was lovely <laughs> and then again I was just really dissociated throughout my whole childhood um, and then I got to college I wanted to do theater in college but again I was just not <laughs> able I was just surviving I was just living each day just to just just to survive god knows only he took care of me um and i want to say that i don't blame anyone for this um god is bigger than any of this and honestly our life this world is light and momentary troubles compared to the glory that god has for us when we're with him forever so whatever but at the same time you know i'm saying whatever but at the same time i'm human <laughs> and i just you know, I managed to get like one acting credit. I was in one one um, television show, nothing big, nothing big at all. Trust me, it's just an extra credit. And, but I know that throughout my life, on and off, I've been trying to do theater, trying to do acting, trying to do modeling, trying, trying to do these things, but always feeling like I have to stop I, I can't do that I'm not allowed to do that and sometimes I look at my life and I'm just like am I like Lord am I behaving this way because of the trauma or am I behaving this way because you genuinely don't want me to be doing those things and then I think if God wanted me to be doing those things it, it wouldn't have mattered the abuse or anything I would have ended up doing those things but every day I have this yearning in my heart just to make something beautiful, to do something beautiful. <laughs> and it doesn't go away. And I want to yield it to the Lord. I try. I yield it. I say, Lord, I yield this to you. And part of the reason why I don't pursue anything is because, you know, the world is awful. Sorry. But, like, I thank God that I didn't go down that path, especially because in my early earlier young adulthood um my teenage years i i was not saved and i was doing whatever i could to survive the pain um so if i had gone into you know professional performance acting all that stuff maybe i would have been going on the wrong path because a lot of women go on the wrong path in order to become stars but i thank god for what he's done for me i thank god for where i am today and concerning the question, where would I be if it wasn't for the sexual abuse? Where would I be if, um, I don't know, if as a little girl I didn't say, um, yes, it was the dancing, maybe, I don't know. I don't know, and I'll never know. But I know that I am loved by an almighty God, and that he has good plans for me. For I know the plans that I have for you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts towards me, towards you, are good thoughts. I still cry when I see. When I see ballet, I cry. When I hear opera, I cry. Because I tried singing too. In college, I would go to the studio, to the studio and practice. But... My mind just was not there. I, I'm telling y'all, I survived by the skin of my teeth and the grace of God. So everything, if God can save me the way he did, and his word says that he works it all out for my good, then I know it's all going to work out for my good and to his glory. So, Father God, be glorified. Another thing I think is that, especially as a child, I had no, <laughs> no defense mechanism. I had no boundaries because there just was no training for that. And I think about how, you know, how you hear stories of, um, of, um, children being abused by trainers and such like that and I just think that maybe if I had gone down that route this string would follow me 
maybe if I had gone down that route of, um, you know, really intensive um, ballet training, maybe I would have, you know, come into contact with even more abuse. I don't know. All I know is God protected me and I'm here. And what's most important is my relationship with Christ. And, yeah. Just checking if I'm still feeling sad. I might cry for the rest of my life about this, but I trust God. And I yield this to Him. And I still love beautiful things. I still love ballet. I still love singing. I still love dancing. I still love just beauty. Beautiful things. I do love elegance. And I yield that to you, Lord. So, that was nice for me to pour that out. I feel a little better. I'm still going to have to pray about it. And I may have to stand, just continue to stand on his word. My life is in the palm of his hand. He's guiding me. He's upholding me with his righteous right hand. You know, his word says that I am not lost. <laughs> I am not lost. Before I was born, he already had the plan written out. And everything the enemy tried to do, all the ways he tried to kill me, Oh, hallelujah, none of them work, and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And Father God, I just ask that you would help my sisters in Christ, anyone in Christ who watches this, Father God, to trust you, to confess when it hurts, but to listen to you and to accept the fact that we are brand new in Christ. We are the head and not the tail. We are not what was done to us. We are not the past. And God can do bigger and better than whatever we dreamed of. So, hmm. 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 No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has in store for us. So, I choose to let that go. Who knows? I'm not saying I'm perfect and that is perfectly not hurting or gone. But I choose to let that go and I pray that. My brethren who have been through trauma and lost childhood and all that stuff. God is bigger. Turn to him. Don't turn to anything else to try and feel better. Turn to him because <laughs> he's the only answer. Don't be deceived. All, all good things come from the Father. Only all good things come from God. Be sober-minded. Don't turn to anything else. Turn to Jesus and talk to him. He understands, he knows, and he will comfort you. And he will give you a double recompense for all that you've lost. I have this on my mirror. Where is it? I will give them praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. And that, uh, that is Zephaniah 319, I believe, is written on my mirror. I'm reading it. God will not put us to shame. God will give us honor in all the ways that we have suffered pain and shame. And God's got us, okay? Help us, Lord God, to release our old dreams and the what-ifs. God is so good. We, have, we are blessed. We are blessed. And if you're a survivor of sexual trauma, um, sexual abuse as a child, if you know Jesus and he's been healing you, Please, please, please try to pour into someone else. Let's put the enemy to shame because he's the one who, has, who owns the shame. It's not us. God is bigger than what happened. And nothing in this world that ever happened to you can change who you are. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are so priceless. Christ on the cross was still king of kings. Even though they, uh, he was naked, you know, even beyond recognition as a human being, he was still king. So nothing this world does to us can change who we are in Christ. Okay, the, accent, the African accent wants to come out. <laughs> All right. Be blessed. And another thing I want to say to myself is, in Christ, I am more beautiful than any pirouette or grand jeté <laughs> or anything else in ballet. Even though I still think they're beautiful, God is far more beautiful. And I have God. I have Jesus, so it'll be all right. Okay. Bye, guys. God bless you. With much love. Bye.